But saturated fat is made of different parts. Okay? So we have stearic acid, lauric acid, palmitic acid, ericodonic acid, and I'm only listing like a couple. There's a many, many more. The point that I want to make with this is that we've demonized saturated fat, that it makes us fat and it causes heart disease and it's really, really unhealthy for us. But it's very simplistic view when looking at fat because lauric acid is found in coconut oil and it's very it's antimicrobial, antiviral, antibacterial, and it's actually in in mother's milk and in any mother's milk of any mammal because it's it's the it's the it's our it's our protection against pathogens. Really, really important. Palmitic acid and stearic acid is within the surface the surface lining of your lungs and it's the primary food source for your heart. Your heart actually prefers, prefers burning saturated fat for fuel and sugar. The one that's demonized is arachidonic acid. This is the one that's demonized. This is the one, arachidonic acid. It's like the spider. That's right. It's like the spider. Evil. Okay, so this is the one that we're demonized about. But the reason I kind of wanted to start with this is that, you know, not all fat is the same. When we're talking about fat, there's a, t there's a couple things we need to look at. First of all, let me just say that a saturated fat is not necessarily bad for you. And second of all, then we also need to talk about where does the fat come from? Because, you know, saturated fat from a grass-fed cow, happy cow roaming the fields of California, living a normal life, the makeup of that fat might be very different than a cow over here that is raised in a mass feeding lot, pumped full of hormones and antibiotics, and fed corn and soy, which it's not designed to eat because cows have four stomachs because they're herbivores. They don't eat starches. So this meat and the fat makeup of this cow versus that cow has nothing, it's very different. But in today's nutritional world, medical world, we just, we just say, well, but saturated fat is bad. See, in the 1950s, what we found out is that we just had this massive influx of heart disease. And we didn't know where it came from. And so here came this prominent researcher named Ansel Keys. And Ansel Keys showed the correlation of saturated fat intake and heart disease. He showed linear correlation in six countries over the world that he could show. Look, they ate most saturated fat, heart disease, linear correlation increased at the same time. The AMA, the government, the whole science community was up in awe, ran with it, became dogma, food pyramid, and on and on. We ran with it. The cholesterol myth, as I call it, was born because we, f we started demonizing cholesterol. But what we don't know is that Ansel Keys was a little bit selective with his research and the way he published it because he actually did research on 22 countries, not just six. And when you take the data of all 22 countries, there is no linear correlation. Nada. There is no link between saturated fat and heart disease. See, the way I approach diet is just think evolution. When we go back two and a half million years all the way, you know, since we've been in existence, we've always eaten saturated fat. Saturated fat is an essential part of so many things in your body. Saturated fat such as cholesterol, it's important for your phospholipids. Every single cell has this phospholipid bilayer made up of 60% cholesterol. It's a hormone precursor. If you want to produce estrogen, progesterone, adrenals, cortisol, aldosterone, adrenaline, you need cholesterol. It's a vitamin D precursor. It's an antioxidant. Who would think cholesterol is an antioxidant? See, cholesterol is not all bad. Your brain's made up of 60% fat. The myelin sheaths around your nerves are made up of saturated fat. And the last time I checked, saturated fat is solid at room temperature. Vegetable oils are liquid. Well, last time I checked, I'm still solid. I'm not liquid. So should I be eating, drinking, and eating more vegetable oils or possibly more saturated fat? Because that's what my buildup is made of. See, but we've been demonized and we've been following this whole thing of cholesterol's bad and it's a health marker and all we look at is cholesterol and cholesterol and cholesterol. But all traditional cultures have eaten cholesterol in abundance and they've never had a problem. See, if you have high cholesterol, there's a reason your cholesterol is high. Your body always has a reason to do things. It doesn't mean that you have a drug deficiency and you need to go take a medication to force it down. It means the body is trying to tell you something. When I see high cholesterol, for me that means the body wants more. Sounds crazy? 
but it's true. Because cholesterol actually pretends, protects your arteries. We think it clogs it up. Yes and no. Because here's the thing. If we denature cholesterol, if we break it down, if we destroy it, like in milk powder or fried foods, it oxidizes and it becomes highly, highly, highly inflammatory and toxic to the system. So here's the thing with fats. Fats have to be eaten in a balance. See, it's not as simple that you can just say, don't eat saturated fat and you will be good. Because the reason we're so sick today is because we're doing exactly that. We're eating, we're drinking skim milk and we're eating low fat this and low fat that and saturated fat is bad. But that's why we're sick. I'm going to keep it simple for biochemistry real quick. But understand that your body's ability to stem inflammation has all to do with the fat you eat. Okay? So this is omega-6s. These are your vegetable oils. Anti-inflammatory. All, all of these fats produce a compound called eicosanoids. And eicosanoids, all you need to know is that what they do is they either increase inflammation or stem inflammation. That's all you need to know. Now the type 1 eicosanoids made from vegetable oils are usually stem inflammation and then the omega-3s, we all know that, right? The fish and all that is anti-inflammatory. These two processes, these two pathways are your body's ability to stem inflammation. Now, the one that I, read, that I put in red is the saturated fat. This is the arachidonic acid, okay? Because this produces an eicosanoid family, the eicosanoid family 2. This is inflammatory. This causes inflammation. And so this is the science behind why we shouldn't eat saturated fat. And there is, so there is a partial truth to it, absolutely. So if we would eat tons and tons and tons of saturated fat, and we wouldn't eat any omega-3s or any omega-6s, we probably might have an issue. Make sense? But here's the thing, guys. Do you see this arrow right here? When you eat a lot, a lot of omega-6s, a lot of vegetable oils, if you're eating out, you're getting vegetable oils. They ain't cooking with butter. They ain't cooking with lard or talon like they used to. They ain't cooking with vegetable oils. Processed corn, soy oils. These oils are polyunsaturates. Polyunsaturates means they're unstable. They are very, very heat labile, and they break down really quick, and they're very reactive. So they oxidize very quick. And what this means is that they become, if you have too much of them, or they're in processed food or in high heat, they actually become inflammatory because they shunt over here and create the type 2 eicosanoids. But what's important to know is that when this happens, if you take an omega-6 oil and shunt it over, it's about 10 times as inflammatory as the saturated fat ever will be. But our diet, Western diet, with processed foods and all the vegetable oils, because we're not, we, we should eat, you know, for a while we said margarine's good, don't do the butter, right? All the, we're kind of reversing that a little bit. But the Western diet approach focuses only on vegetable oils, vegetable oil, vegetable oil, some fish oils, and then let's leave away this. But what happens is we're just creating more inflammation and we're eating fats that are very unstable. They create free radicals, causes cancer, causes inflammation, on and on and on. Yes? So olive oil is an omega-9. Great question. A lot better than omega-6. It can because, if, for example, I don't like to cook a lot with olive oil at high temperatures because it can actually become rancid and create. See, the thing is with fats, you never want to have a fat that becomes rancid or oxidized. Always stay away from roasted nuts because the fat in the nuts, which will be beneficial to you, is oxidized and causes inflammation. Always stay away from utilizing any liquid oils at super, super high temperature. So if you eat a lot of fried foods, highly inflammatory to the body. Now we know fried foods isn't healthy. We know that. But if you're eating any processed food, See, most of these oils, the way we even produce them, we used to just take stone mills and take the kernels and squeeze the oil out. Very natural process. Today, we use a process of extrusion at high temperatures and heat, and then we squeeze the last 10% of the oil because we add even more chemicals to it. Vegetable oils, by the time you even get them in the bottle, are already inflammatory today. The processed vegetable oils, because of the way modern processing for quantity and speed handles the fat. Because at high temperature, any oil will become rancid. Fish oil will be go bad. This will go bad. Saturated fats are the most stable. 
Okay, so this is why they're actually the best for cooking. <laughs>